All eyes are in Washington right now and all because of this. What's going on with Russia to see what President Putin could do next. His Ukrainian counterpart is now saying an attack could come as soon as tomorrow. Washington DC correspondent Jesse Tenor has the latest. There would be widespread human suffering. State Department spokesperson Ned Price warns a full invasion into Ukraine could result in the deaths of tens of thousands of civilians and trigger a refugee crisis for millions. An invasion, as we have said, could begin at any time. Price stresses new Russian military forces continue to arrive at the Ukrainian border. The forces the Russians have massed, they could launch at any point. Following Monday's briefing with White House National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan, Virginia Democrat Senator Mark Warner worried cyber attacks that could take out Ukraine's power grid are also imminent. There's been a lot of speculation on a hypothetical basis, but the reality of that uh, we could see literally in the coming days. Senators have been working on a legislative response to Russia, but hit an impasse in negotiations. Alabama Republican Senator Tommy Tuberville said Democrats should have voted with them to sanction Russia's controversial gas pipeline. The Senate already missed a chance to hit Putin where it hurts. Who are they more afraid of, President Biden or Putin? Russian officials maintain President Putin is willing to negotiate, but the White House is proceeding with caution. The path for diplomacy remains available if Russia chooses to engage constructively. And that was Jesse Tenor reporting. Now, diplomatic efforts will continue throughout the day. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin is meeting with his European counterparts and NATO leadership in Belgium. And the German Chancellor plans to sit down with Putin in Moscow. Well, now to election 2022 coverage. We have numbers for day one of early voting in Harris County. In fact, a little over 7,000 Democrats voted in person yesterday and by mail. A little more than 6,500 Republicans voted in person and by mail. And when it comes to the governor's race, a new poll out from the University of Texas and Texas Politics Project shows Governor Abbott is comfortably leading right now, Beto O'Rourke, in a presumptive matchup coming in November. Well, both candidates will still have to officially win the nomination for their party in the March 1st primary election. Now, the poll shows Beto O'Rourke with 90% of support for governor, of course, amongst other Democratic candidates. Now, Governor Abbott has 60% of support amongst the Republican contenders so far. Now, when it comes to head to head, Abbott still leads O'Rourke by 10 points right now. At a recent event, Abbott told reporters he's confident in those numbers. It's way early. Uh, polls are going to go up and down, uh, and uh, we an anticipate uh, to run a very aggressive campaign. A big reminder here, every statewide race, congressional and state legislative seats are on this ballot for this primary. That's why it's so important for you to vote. Now for our border report, we're kicking off a border town tour to give you a firsthand look at how average Americans are really impacted by migration surges. We're going to start in San Diego. A U.S. veteran is back in the place that he calls home years after being deported. And he's not alone. The U.S. Government Accountability Office estimates about 250 veterans were deported between 2013 and 2018. But now new federal guidelines are in place to try to prevent veteran deportations. News Nation's Robert Sherman has more. With a big smile plastered across his face, Mauricio Hernandez Mata came emerging out of the San Ysidro port of entry. First came the hugs from his attorney and those who helped him get And then the big one, his mom. This is Mauricio's first time home in the U.S. in over 10 years. I think I'm going to wake up right now. And I'm still going to be in Mexico deported, so that's how it feels. I, it's still so unreal. Mauricio is a U.S. Army veteran who served in over 100 combat missions. Upon leaving the service, he expected to be granted his U.S. citizenship. Instead, he wound up deported out of the country after being convicted for drug and firearm possession. Exiled is, in my opinion, a kind word for the feeling. Immigration laws are unforgiving. They're extremely harsh. Things that are misdemeanors can be what's deemed in immigration law as an aggravated felony. Andres Kwan, an attorney with the ACLU, says he sees a lot of veterans, especially those with PTSD like Mauricio, make mistakes and end up deported, despite their military service. 
The ACLU tells News Nation it's impossible to keep a completely accurate count, but they know there are thousands of deported U.S. veterans currently living in over 50 countries. Mauricio is the first to tell you he's made mistakes, but today he's just thankful to be hugging his family and standing in the U.S., the country he loves. If I had a second chance, I would gladly do everything again, fight for my country in any conflict. I'm, I'm always considered myself and I am an American. And that was Robert Sherman reporting. Now the Biden administration has pledged to bring some of these deported veterans back home. Meanwhile, the ACLU says it's a slow process and they're really just taking this one veteran at a time.